Hey everyone, welcome back. Ready for a deep dive. Always. What are we exploring today? So this one's a little different. We got this, I don't know, like a personal writing from someone, we'll call him Wording. Okay. And it's not like an article or anything, more like thoughts. Straight from the heart, you know? Interesting. What kind of thoughts? It's full of these like truth bombs about life, love, society, the whole shebang. Sounds intriguing. It really is. And we don't know much about this war dang guy, but his words, they really hit home. Like one thing he talks about is knowledge. Okay, how's that? He's got this line, awareness and knowledge are enemies of peace and love. Whoa. Right. And at first I was like, wait, isn't knowledge usually seen as a good thing? Yeah, it's definitely a provocation. Yeah, it totally made me rethink some things. Yeah. It reminds me of that whole Garden of Eden thing, you know, yeah. the idea of innocence loss. Oh, interesting. You think he's saying ignorance is bliss? Well, not bliss exactly, but maybe easier. Right. Okay, I see other. what you're saying. But he's not saying we should just be clueless, right? Right. Because he also talks about wanting wisdom, understanding. Exactly. Cool. It's like this tension he's highlighting. Yeah. Maybe it's not knowledge itself that's the problem, but how we use it. Ooh, how so? Like, what if, and this is just me thinking out loud here, but what if knowledge without empathy, without that grounding in love he talks about, what if it becomes a way to judge, to separate ourselves from others? That's a really good point, because he also talks a lot about equality, right? He does. Like, he wants a life free from poverty, from injustice for himself and everyone else. Wow. So is he saying that knowledge without that desire for a better world without connection, that it can actually be harmful. It's possible. Like he even questions whether one person can really be superior to another if we all come from the same source, you know? Right. It's like he's begging us to figure out how these big ideas fit together. Knowledge, equality, love. This might sound weird, but it reminds me of that thing, the Dunning-Kruger effect. Dunning-Kruger. Yeah. It's like how sometimes a little bit of knowledge can make you more confident, not less. Because you don't know enough to see how much you don't know. Oh, I see where you're going with this. Like, is it possible that until we really understand something deeply, we fall into this trap of being certain, of judging? And wouldn't that be the opposite of peace and love? It's like thinking we've got it all figured out mm -hmm. can actually be the thing that holds us back. Yes. And maybe that's the danger of knowledge without that deeper understanding. Without that humility. Yes. Yeah. It's like we build walls instead of bridges. And haven't we all been there at some <laughs> point? Totally. Thinking we knew it all yeah. and then realizing, nope. So much more to learn. It's humbling, for sure. It really is. Makes you think, you know? It does. And speaking of things that make you think, he also talks about this idea of choice. Choice. How so? Well, he has this one line. He says, we were all here with no choices. Mm. And that's where I was like, whoa, hold up a minute. Yeah, that's a big statement. It is. Because on the one hand, this guy's all about taking responsibility, right? Self-power and self-governance, he calls it. But then he throws out this idea that we have no choices. It's kind of a head scratcher. It is, it's a bit of a puzzle. Right. What if it goes back to that knowledge thing we were talking about? Okay, how so? Like, we make choices based on what we know, the options we see in front of us. Right. But those options, they're shaped by so many things. Mm -hmm. Our upbringing, the systems we're born into. Our families, our experiences. Exactly. Even our genes play a role. Okay, so maybe it's not that we literally have zero choices, but the playing field's not exactly even from the get-go. That's a good way to put it. Because he's really passionate about this, by the way. He talks about refusing to be poor, about wanting a life full of beauty and peace. And he doesn't shy away from those desires. No, I he know. owns them. He does. And he ties them back to this vision he has of a world where everyone has what they need to thrive. Right, like he sees how outside forces can limit our choices. Totally. But he's also driven by this inner fire, this refusal to settle for a limited reality. It's inspiring in a he way. He says, it's like he's saying, I'm gonna create a good life, even if- Even if the odds are stacked against him. Exactly, which let's be real, can feel true sometimes. He even calls out this whole cycle of buying and selling, uh, yeah. how it messes with our heads about what we really need versus what we're told we should want. Consumerism at its finest. Right, it's yeah. like he's yearning for something deeper, something more. Totally. Like a world where we're not just cogs in a machine. You know. Where our souls are nourished. I like uh, that. Yes. And you know what that reminds me of? He says something about how all our souls come from one root. Oh, interesting. How do you see that connecting? 
It's like he's saying we're all connected, right? But then how does that play with everything else he's saying yeah. about injustice and like wanting a better world? Yeah, it's like he's holding these two truths at the same time. You know, the interconnectedness, the very real ways we get disconnected, treated as less than. And he doesn't shy away from that tension, does he? No, not at all. He talks about wanting a dose, desirability, and ability. Oh. Not just opportunities, but like the inner resources to make something of them. I love that. He's not just pointing fingers. He's also looking inward. Totally. It's like even with all the messiness he sees in the world, he still believes in this power we have to create a good life. It's kind of inspiring when you think about it. This guy, we don't even know his real name, but he's wrestling with these huge EE questions. And not just in some abstract way, but in a, in a way that's like deeply personal. He wants yeah. to live a good life on his own terms, you know? Yes. Exactly. And he sees how this whole system, the way things are set up, it can make that really hard. Oh, absolutely. Remember how he talks about the whole buying and selling thing? Yeah. Like how it distorts our desires, makes us crave things we don't actually need. Oh, yeah. It's like he's on to something there, right? This constant pressure to consume, it's like it distracts us from what really matters. From those deeper longings he's talking about. Yes. The yearning for connection, for meaning. And it's interesting how he brings it all back to that idea of all our souls coming from one root. Right. Like, imagine if we really believed that deep down, if we saw ourselves and everyone we met. How would that change the way we treat each other? The choices we make? That's a powerful question. And, you know, I'm thinking about our listeners right now. Like, how do we take these big ideas and actually apply them to our lives? It's a good question. Yeah. And I don't think it's about having all the answers, you know. It's more about shifting our perspective, even just a little. Okay, I like that. What do you mean? Like, next time you're facing a conflict with someone, try seeing them through that lens, that idea of shared humanity, that one root. Even when they feel like your enemy, like he says. Especially then. Yeah. Because who knows, maybe that shift in perspective, it's the first step towards bridging that gap. Instead of building more walls. Mm -hmm. Exactly. Yeah. It's not about agreeing on everything, but remembering that we're all part of this messy, beautiful human experience together. Man, that's a good place to leave it. This war dang, he really got us thinking, didn't he? He did. He really did. Didn't give us easy answers, but he definitely got under our skin. That's the sign of something real, you know, something worth pondering. Absolutely. Well, on that note, folks, thanks for joining us for another deep dive. Until next time. Keep those brains buzzing, and remember, you never know where wisdom might be hiding.